Welcome back to the programme. A uh, little panic there, trying to uh, get the next uh, guest lined up, but he is there, and uh, Dave King, hopefully, is on the end of the line. Good evening, Dave. Adam, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. Here we go again. I oh, know. Soon rolls round, don't it? Do, do, you still, uh, do you still get goosebumps and feel like Christmas Day again? Yeah, of course you do. Start of the season, and you hand all the training kit out, and, you know, and, you, you know... It's, it's great. It is good. You do think, you know, you think about and have a do the right pre-season, the new signings, about, you know, how you think you've done all your groundwork. But there's always something that throws a spanner in the works. But, yeah, no, no, really, really exciting, really looking forward to it. Now, uh, you got yourself promoted uh, back into last season. Uh, you're back in the Midland Football League again. Uh, yeah. First of all, has it been easy or difficult or somewhere in between to hang on to your nucleus of uh, your squad from last season? Um, somewhere in between, the bulk has stayed. Uh, when we've lost sort of four or five, two or three were regulars. No disrespect to the other two, they're sort of squad players. Um, I thought, you know, Dimitri was always going to get off us, to be totally honest. And uh, Ben, obviously Ben Birch, I have, have a risk with coming for him. Um, 12 month contract. I know he's got some travelling, but. Uh, you know, it's a big step up for him, but it's one that he certainly would have to take. And, and Lee Smith decided to stay in the West Midlands League and sort of move up the one above. So, you know, things happen, but uh, you wish them all the best. And I'll certainly keep in touch with, with all of them and we have a bit of banter. But, uh, you know, luckily I think I've done well. I think I've done well, you know, recruiting. So um, I'm, I'm really happy with the squad, to be fair. And the one thing is uh, that... Uh even if players leave Tividal, they don't go very far. There's always one Tividal family, isn't there? And everyone still wants to be part of it. Oh, oh very much so, you know. You have to be there to understand that. Uh, you know, the TV family, I know they always hashtag in it and Twitter and that, but you have to go up there and realise the people behind the scenes and the supporters. Um, you know, it's absolutely, it's absolutely phenomenal. And, it, you know, I, I always say about Tividal, <laughs> is they'll do something, they go, I love that for. <laughs> and then they'll do something else you go and it more more makes you cry. You know, you start to cry yourself you know, because they're just fantastic. Um, you know, uh, the yeah, you know, it is a family. It is a family from every supporter that we've got to the committee to everybody involved. We've always tried to portray it as a community club and, and that is exactly where it is. It is slap bang in the middle of an estate of houses which uh, you know you need more than the sat nav to actually find the ground. Uh, but but it, once you're there everyone makes you feel so welcome, don't they? They do and I think that's you know, Leon who's you know that's what he portrays and that's what he always says, you know, never drop your standards. You know, when players leave, you always say to me, have you left on good terms? I said, well, I'll try to. <laughs> um, you know, and, and they do. They do portray that. They welcome anybody on board. Uh, and they treat everybody the same. And not the hospitalities. What the girls do is sort of second to none. Uh, and it is, it is a community football club who do exceedingly well for where they are and what they do, without any doubt at all. Now, for some of our newer listeners, perhaps won't uh, remember the fact or know that uh, you were a very successful youth team manager uh, back in the day at uh, Starbridge Football Club. This is your first real opportunity at uh, senior uh, management. Um, you're into, I think this is your fourth season now at Tividale. It seems to have gone by really quick. Um, uh -huh. How are you finding it? Uh, well, I did nine years at Starbridge, um, you know, with the youth team and thoroughly enjoyed that and made a lot of friends down there and had some great teams over the years well lads went on to play a good standard of football then I came back into management I was with Lai 97-98 that's for Kieran Busting because I always have to remind him I won it then as well because <laughs> you know, he, he gets really excited about that, what, that, that <laughs> comment um, so it was a second spell but now I'm loving it absolutely it was, it was time for me to go I couldn't do no more at Stourbridge you know with the players that we We'd gone through the system, and I needed a challenge. And uh, even though the first season of there was, was was hard, you know, I certainly enjoyed it. Still enjoyed it still, but obviously rebuilt. And I've, you know, I've, that season, my first season there, when we completely finished bottom of the league, I learned more that season than I probably ever did in any of my, you know, 
future football life. Because you, you were dropped in at the deep end in many respects because <laughs> um, I suppose uh, the, the club was going in the opposite direction and the tide was such that there was nothing really you could do about it apart from trying to put some foundations in for, uh, for the future. And that, in effect, is what you've been allowed to do and what you have done. Yeah, very much so. To be fair, everybody said don't touch the job for, for, uh, four years, get down to it financially and nothing there, the club's just going one way, and so many people said that to me, but uh, I always liked the challenge, and I fancied the job, as soon as I walked through the door, I had a good feeling about it, uh, so that's the first thing i say, and the second thing, you just got to heed the praise on Liam Murray, I think all the chairman might have panicked a bit, or would bring more experienced man who might even bring a, 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 a budget with them, but even when I went down that first season, you know, he said, no, we go again, and that's his famous words, no, we go again, and so I think a lot of praise should be on him for seeing the uh, for, for sticking by me. And luckily now, well, you know, we've got those rewards. What is it about Leon that makes that club run so successfully? Uh, is it the fact that he's just level-headed and wants the club to do just as well as it can within the means available to the club? I think you just solved Brexit within two days. <laughs> <laughs> now. Um, Oh, he's just such a warm, he's a warm gentleman, he's a pure gentleman. Uh, he looks after everybody from 1 to 11, makes everybody feel welcome. And, you know, obviously before I took the job, I asked a few people and they all say the same thing about him. You know, heaps of praise, gentleman, does it for the right thing, smile on his face. And, uh, yeah, as you said, Adam, you know, he's a, a top man to be involved in grassroots football, really, really. It's different how lucky to have him, and I've said that, you know, and I'll say, say that. While I'm there, they are really lucky to have Leon Murray. And you look at, uh, you, you've got promotion. It's a, 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 you know, I think you'll admit it is a jump all the same to the next level, to the Midland Football League. There are some very tough sides uh, in, in that league. Um, do you think you're prepared for the league? Well, I didn't do very well three years ago. Well. <laughs> uh, you know, finally, I wasn't going to mention that, but go no, on. <laughs> look, you know, I think. Uh, you could have given it to anybody three years ago, and I still say it would have been the same results with what was available and how it was then. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know it's a tough league, and history shows you people have gone from the West Midlands League who go up, you know, 8 out of 10 ratio, come back down. It is absolutely massive step. And I, I spoke to Ian Long, and he says the hardest league to get out of, you know, when he was at Elf Church, and I knew the, the lad of Teddy for Peter, and, you know, he says the same, so I know how hard it is and the team's in there. You know, you think, wow, you know, but, hey, what, it's going to be great, isn't it? We're going to have some fun this season, and we're, you know, great bunch of lads I've got, and we're going to relish this and, and enjoy it as well. And you know what? We'll, 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 you know, we'll get a few results along the way, I'm quite sure. I was going to say, you, you've always come across as, as somebody who just uh, is happy as long as the guys playing for you give off their, their, their best, uh, win, lose, win, lose or draw. You, you, you'll, you'll go to work the following day, you'll still be alive, you'll still enjoy life. Um, and I know you, you're a winner, but I think you know where to draw the line as well. Yeah, I, I do. And I, I realise, you know, financially, some of the teams in the league are going to play, uh, play to them are well looked after. Uh, but sometimes it isn't, you know, all about the money. Tactically, you've got to be aware yourself. You've got to know the players in your squad, what they can do, what they can't do. They've got to buy into everything that we, we, we do together. I'm lucky to have the lads I've got. They are a top draw. They really are. And I think of so many things they've done last season, season before, even pre-season this season. There's one lad who should be our oldest at the, he's bought, you know, got to fight back to make sure he's here. So, you know, I am really, you know... Blessed to have these boys, you know, without any doubt. And, and, and some flipping good players as well, if you don't mind me saying as well. I mentioned to Sean Geddes uh, a little bit earlier, one of the difficult things, of course, is attracting people through the turnstiles in the first place. Uh, but nothing succeeds like, like success. And you're in the Vars, you're in the FA Cup. Uh, you could potentially be playing Wensfield twice, uh, depending on how, how things turn out, and Wensfield yeah. in, in the league below you. You know, it, it is an opportunity, I suppose, to, to make a bit of cash and, and perhaps get uh, the club in the, uh, in the media a little bit over the next couple of months. 100%, you know, the, the FA Cup, the FA Vars, we had a great little run, my second season there, where we went through a couple of rounds, Highgate and Wilson Wood on the way, 
narrowly lost to Rushton and Diamonds. I don't know the crowd at Tiverdale. That the Rushton was about three fifty, three seven five. What I can imagine. Um, and he got us in a bit. Of, you know that was great. And he, financially as well. You know every club who's in that FA Cup step six and step five levels. That point, you know, it helps that the gate money's gone up for the, the prize money. Sorry, has gone up in the FA Cup. I think the Vars as well. So of course it helps. And it probably eats, eats a little bit more pressure on you for those reasons. I was going to say, it's more pressure on the cup competitions than perhaps on the league. Oh, financially, it's nice. Obviously, you know, it is nice. I'm not going to say, you know, well, you know, it is nice. And like, <laughs> my sister manages his son and himself in Turkey. He keeps reminding me how big the FA Cup match is. Great, <laughs> you're not even there, you know. Yeah, great, thanks for that. <laughs> um, the, the, the Prodigy's league with me. I've got to prove myself in this league, um, you know, so the league is one to, for me to make sure we're, we're stable and that we, we're in it next season and we've enjoyed our football along the way. We've played some good football as well. Uh, so that's priority for me, but everybody loves a cup run, obviously. But realistically, league-wise, are you just looking for a stability and maybe a, a mid-table finish or something like that? Yeah, everybody, you know, players we've seen in the summer have, have asked these, what's your ambitions for next season? You know, the, um, you know, if I go as well, we want to be top five. You know, I'm, I'm also realistic. You know, we want to compete every game and we want to pick up as many points. But I think it's a big thing for Tiverdale Football Club you now to stabilise them for a season in this league because they were up and down, down, now they've come back up. We need a bit of stabilis- stabilisation. Bolmy St. Michael's 13, 14 years in that league. Mm-hmm. That's where they just need to be at the moment. You know, we can't afford to go down. So, you know, we don't want to go down. But if we were promoted, you know, happy days. But So I'm not going to make any predictions because, you know what, there's so many new teams in there and so many things, you know, we just want to make sure that we, we are going to compete and we're going to pick some points along the, along the way. Oh, absolutely. And uh, But you look at the league and I, I sit here every August and, and, and uh, or July in this case and, and look at the league table and look mm-hmm. at the, the, the teams in there and there's always strength and depth uh, yeah. all around the, the Midlands it's almost like the creme de la creme to a certain extent of of, of, of this level of football uh, you know you've got your likes of AFC Wolfroonians and their fantastic stadium at, uh, at Castlecroft uh, you've got Highgate United are always a, a very strong side and of course you've got Rowie's Sporting Cows are in there as well uh, mm-hmm. there, there are no easy games Games, are there? No, no, no. And there's obviously our, our neighbours down the road, Light Town, that'll be very tough next season. Uh, there's no easy games, and not disrespecting the West Midlands League at all, but there were teams where we could the, the squad rotation was well used because, you know, OK, we should be OK today, lads, you know, but that's something disrespectful to anybody at all. But this league, every game, every game, you know, the, the 38 games we're going to play, it's a tough game every game, obviously. I suppose proof of the pudding was the Worcester City coming into the league last season and not being able to get straight back out of it. No, that's right. That's right. No, I know it is tough. And, you know, I know there's new teams come in as well who, you know, I think Leon turns about Newark, someone Newark, something said that, you know, they're phenomenal. Uh, so there's teams we don't know too much about, but as you said, Worcester there and, They've suddenly gone heavily into the transfer market this this season, and Rowie at Kelso, you know, he won't be far away again. You just go, oh, there's a list, is there? There's a list that you think, you know, fair play to them. Um, but we, so we know how tough the games are going to be, but that doesn't fear us. We're not going to fear anybody because you know my boys are good now as well. So, but exciting times, exciting times. A couple of other things to uh, ask you about. Uh, obviously, I mentioned you were heavily involved, uh, well, you were manager of Starbridge Youth Team. Is there still a youth set up or development set up at, at Tividale? They've just put a youth team on board for the first season. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, no, uh, Dave Green has took it on board this season for the youth team. We did have a youth team last season. So Dave's come on board. A bit of breath of fresh air, to be fair, to him. Brought some new player, new squad, new players, and Dave's very keen and enthusiastic. So that's something to look for. And in all fairness, some of the friendlies during pre-season, we have included some of the lads. And uh, he's got some nice, some nice talent there, to be fair. So um, it's a big plus in my area. But, you know, I think they did have an academy at, at one stage. Didn't work out for whatever reasons. So, you know, again, probably just want to have it stable at the moment. You know, just keep, uh, just keep doing the right things in the right way. 
But of course, uh, no doubt you're still trying to fa- attract families, and, and and by having some kind of youth team set up there, uh, that that's uh, how you'll keep the interest there. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Dave's very big on that. He's very well organised on. You know, he makes sure all his lads are there. I think he runs an under eight team as well. Or actually, they've come into Tiverdale bandwagon this season as well. They'll come and support, and I know the first team boys will come down and support. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, no, they're pretty good, to be fair. No, definitely. Uh, what's your thoughts on the sim bin? Thoughts on the sim bin is... Odd. I laugh about this because I said to Kieran, I said, you saw that sim bin out and just tell me what I've got to do. <laughs> and now he's not here, so now I'm looking up on it because I'm a bit worried after Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I don't know. If he's changed so much, hasn't it? The rules and the regs. VAR in the in the Premier you know Premier League. I watched the Ladies World Cup. I thought the VAR was too slow. I thought it was great, and he, he gets the right decisions. But I don't know. On Saturday we played a friendly against uh, Sutton, and the referee was trying to put uh, a lad in the sim bin, and then they were saying, "Well, that doesn't happen in our step, so we could do it." And we were just trying to substitute the lad. So I think he's going to bring some fun in. <laughs> he's going to keep everybody on his toes. But uh, he, I, I don't know. To me. I don't know, and I know he's going to come in and try to get higher up in a year or two's time. But do, do you think it, it's protecting referees a bit more, and perhaps uh, they should have a bit more power than, than perhaps they have at the moment? Um, I think it might be quite easy to put a, a player in the sim bin, somebody you know, first back tackle or something, and then I think that could, oh, well, he's actually he's sim bin, he'll have to go sim bin. And I just think, you know, I think your referees have got the hardest job in the world. And I just think, you know, I am old school. Vic. Come and talk to us. Talk to us before the game. Or all these courses that have the FA. Tell you what, just have a, have a, have a course for all the managers. Go sit with the FAs so we can understand the new rules and just sit down and have a chat for them, really, because I do absolutely feel dreadfully sorry when I've got six or seven, eight people shouting from a bench at them. It can be very intimidating. It really can. I suppose what you want, uh, and you probably don't get at that level, is consistency of referees because you'll have one with one interpretation of a situation and then you'll have another one the next game with a completely different interpretation. 100%. They've got a hard job. They've all got to get adhere to the same rule and, uh, and, and make sure he's adhered, you know, he's come across like that. Uh, yeah, very much so. Yeah, I think that could be a problem. And we're going to hear all stories about it through the season. Um, so I'm doing a bit of homework at the moment with the little card they gave me, checking up what I can do, what I can't do. But um, so oh, it is what it is. But I don't know. Let's let's talk about it in 12 months' time, and hopefully we say it's been a success. Referees have found it good, and then it's been good for the game. I was just thinking, actually, I hadn't thought thought this out before. But if you concede a penalty. And uh, the players threw on goal. It's, a, it's an automatic red card. I'm just thinking where a yellow card's given, that would be a 10 minute sim binning, would it? Or have I uh, misinterpreted that? You can see the penalty and, and a 10 minute sim bin. Look, I've got enough problems trying to pick my squad. I've got a play one, new player wanting to sign tonight. Uh, uh, I'm going to sign this sim bin thing. It'll be a Friday night job for me, right? Listen, on the, let me get the Coventry on Saturday, right? Where's that thing about the sim bin? I have enough <laughs> troubles finding your ground. Forget about the uh, sim bins. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I think um, now going back to the youth team I've just seen a tweet that's come through um, which I presume is from Leon perhaps uh, if the rain ever stops Tividal Youth entertain Gorno Athletic Youth in a friendly at the beaches on Monday the 5th of August 7.45 kick off admission is £2 for all over 12s of which I think that's uh, my category under 12s are free with a paying adult uh, so um, the youth team in action against Gorno Athletic at the beaches Monday the 5th of August August 7.45 yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yes everybody get behind the youth team and, and uh, the the, uh, the first team and the first team get underway it's an early start 3rd of August it gets earlier and earlier but you're at Coventry oh. Sphinx on Saturday and uh, how do you feel about that? I can say tough start you know Coventry Sphinx at home they don't lose many over a season but then every game is going to be tough I suppose it is a plus you've got the players who, um, you know, the teams haven't got going yet and sort of five or six games into the season, so they've all hit a bit of form. It's obviously going to be a tough game, um, but we've done all right pre-season, apart from Monty and Wilco keep going on every wedding in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell you, I thought I was on Love Island then too at one stage, so I just couldn't <laughs> find them for love or money. But they are back, thank God. 
Well, no, Auntie misses again the weekend for another wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, tough side. They're a good team. I think both Coventry teams are good things. And United, uh, we've done a couple of weeks ago, and they were, you know, it seemed less out. Yes, it'll be a tough game, definitely. And just a quick thought um, midweek matches, home matches, are they going to be Wednesdays this season? No, they are back to Tuesdays. They're okay, to Tuesdays. right. They're okay. Back to Tuesdays for the next season. Good stuff, good stuff. That means we we can cover you. I'll be standing up on the Media Bank in amongst all the weeds uh, doing yeah. reports. Ah, uh, well, and, no, I think the pictures have put a bit of work on the ground, I've been told. So, uh, fingers crossed, you'll be uh, nicely looked after and uh, not too uh, comfortable up there. And and how is the, the, the pitch looking? Because it, it can be rock hard at this time of year, can't it? Yeah, right. To be fair, that we, we were due for a friendly tonight against uh, FC Darleston. And up to sort of about half past four or five o'clock, it was, it was well playable. And, you know, to be fair, and it was, it, we played on Saturday and it wasn't bad at all. There's certainly, you know, a bit more work's gone on here. There's certainly grass in the goal now this season. No joke to anybody who didn't have that, that, that season because he didn't settle. So fair play to Ted. He's put a, he's put a bit of work on and it looks, uh, it looks good. Yeah, no, no, quite impressed. Dave, always a pleasure. Wish you all the best and, and the team all the best for the season ahead. We'll catch up with you, obviously, on a, on a regular basis going forward. But uh, thanks for talking to us tonight. Thanks, Adam. Take care. Friend. Cheers, pal. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, Dave King, manager of uh, Tividale. Now, just before...